booktube it's missy and today i'm here to share with you guys my october wrap up 2017 are you happy to see the non-scary side of me i am definitely going to miss october i absolutely love dressing up it's my favorite thing in the whole world i mean halloween to me is christmas like i'm okay with christmas i like halloween more Anyways, I completed nine books in the month of October, which seems like a lot. I did have a very large tentative TBR, about 15 books long, so completing nine is very good. And then I started five books that I wasn't able to complete in October, but I do want to continue reading them. Uh, hopefully in November. It's not part of my TBR, but I would like to add them anyways. So we're going to go over the books that I completed. I will give you my reviews for those. And then I will talk about the books that I started. And then I will, at the end, talk about the scary movies that I watched and a game that I purchased on Steam. If you guys are interested in movies and games, I will have it at the end of this video because some people don't like that stuff. All right, so the very first readathon that I participated in was the A Yearathon Readathon. It took place from the 2nd through the 8th. I did very well that week and the theme was LGBTQIA and the challenge was to read poetry or short stories. So the very first one that I read was A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. Now this is a novella so I'm going to consider it to be a short story. Um, this was very strange and the whole reading month was kind of meh. I was really surprised how meh it was. Um, so I gave this novella here 3.5 stars. It's about a boy. I don't remember his name because I read a whole bunch of books so let me just find it really quickly. The boy's name's James. The girl's name is Amelia. Okay so James um, asks out Amelia if she wants to go on a date. They've never dated before. Um, she says yes. He takes her on a canoe ride. There are three separate lakes that they go to. The main one is where all the tourists are. The second one is where all of the locals hang out because it's a little bit smaller. And there is a hidden one that no one knows about that's through a, like, a cement tunnel. Um, and it's very, very narrow. So when they go through on their canoe, their canoe's scraping against this tunnel. I, I think it's just kind of like a water drainage system. I'm not sure, but that inner lake um, is their focal point for the entire book. So within that third lake, there is a house, as you can see, at the bottom, the kids become obsessed with this house. So they spend their entire summer scuba diving in this house and for some reason the house is a little bit haunted and magical and very eerie none of the items in the house float like they're supposed to they're all grounded and like stuck inside like the tables there's glasses on the tables and the glasses aren't floating everything is where it's supposed to be if the house was not underwater if that makes sense uh the kids are fascinated with the whole concept of this house and again they explore it every single day and that's basically the story it is a little creepy towards the middle the ending was very weird i didn't understand the ending at all if you read this, let me know down below if it's going to be a circular kind of thing where it's going to happen again, if you get my drift. Let me know. Um, other than that, 3.5 stars. I like Josh Mallerman's writing. It's very atmospheric, and I get where he's going, but if you've read Bird Box, the other books that he's written is just not as eerie as that story. So, I had high expectations because Bird Box was so amazing, and this was just, meh. It's a, it's not even a love story. The kids date, and, um, but their main focus is this creepy underwater house. Alright, the next book that I read, again, is a novella. It's not a short story. I'm kind of tweaking 
the challenge here. Uh, this one is called Mapping the Interior by St Stephen Graham Jones. I got this in my Nocturnal Readers box. I was very um, excited to read this because Paul Tremblay, who wrote A Head Full of Ghosts, um, blurbs the front and it says emotionally raw disturbing creepy and brilliant will not be unmoved I was unmoved uh, it says you will not be unmoved but I had no feelings whatsoever with this book I gave this novella 2.5 stars and that was being generous um I don't understand why this was written I don't want to be rude and say that the the author didn't take his time in making this. I just don't understand it. I didn't get it. I buddy read this with Amy and it just wasn't good. I didn't like it. It's about a boy who's 15. Um, he lives in a small town outside of a reservation. He's Native American. His father passed away like four or five years ago, so he lives in this house with his mom and his brother Dino. Dino has some kind of mental disability. He has seizures all the time, um, and he is uh, low on the, not spectrum, I don't think he's autistic or anything, but he does have a learning disability. He does have seizures, so uh, our main character and the mom is very concerned about him. The father was either murdered or he drowned and everybody in the town thought he was no good because he was a troublemaker so nobody cares that he's dead. Our main character does though because he sees his father one night walking through the kitchen. He knows his dad is dead so he's thinking, oh my dad's a ghost and he's going to come back and he, and he missed us and he loves us. And he's going to come back for us. But that's not, that's not what happens. So I'm, I'm thinking this whole time that this is going to be a ghost story. Because the very first sentence says, I was 12 the first time I saw my dead father cross from the kitchen doorway to the hall that led back to the utility room. That was the first sentence. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be absolutely amazing. But it doesn't make any sense. He has like these weird dreams and he does things that doesn't that seems like he's almost like he's like he's delusional like he's imagining these things are happening I just it was too over my head it was like a I, I don't even know <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this book I didn't like it it didn't make any sense 2.5 stars again that's very very generous if you've read this please explain to me what this is about if the boy is not schizophrenic and he is actually seeing his dead father why did he do the things he did throughout the book and what are the consequences I just didn't get it so there's that the next book that I read, um, this was to, well, it was because I wanted to read it, but I ended up finding out that there was LGBT characters in here, so it fulfilled the theme of LGBTQIA for the A Year-a-thon Readathon. Um, so that is River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. I was really looking forward to reading this because I thought it was going to be about killer hippos. It ended up not really being about killer hippos. I mean, there were killer hippos in it, but not to what I was hoping it was going to be. So I gave this book three stars. Um, our main character is gay or bisexual. Um, the person that he is involved with right now is non-binary. There are, there's another character who is lesbian. She's pregnant and, um, there's hippos. So basically our main character, uh, what is his name? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know any of the main characters' names because I read these so long ago. Houndstooth, Winslow Houndstooth. So basically Winslow wants to seek revenge on a man who burned down his ranch. He had a hippo ranch, he loved all of his hippos, he raised them from babies, and then the man was jealous of his success, so he burned down his ranch, and this is a revenge story. 
our main character ends up talking to some people who are going to pay him to release all of these hippos that are behind a dam. Um, that will help uh, make it so they don't have feral hippos anymore just hanging out. Plus the main character's rival is using these hippos for his own gains. Um, he's like killing people with these hippos and so the group that is going along with our main character to release these hippos they think that this is kind of like a not a heist but they don't think it's revenge they think that he's doing something else and they keep talking about that within the book and he keeps reminding them that that's not what he's doing I'm having a hard time explaining this book as well okay so basically our main character needs to release these hippos but the bad guy is really bad and this is the first book in a trilogy I think and it was just okay I mean the hippos were kind of cool I like the diversity of the characters but they were all kind of flat at the same time I don't know if if you were looking forward to reading this book because I was talking about it and I was hyping it up you might not want to pick it up because it's not as cool as I thought it was going to be it's up to you I might read the sequel just to find out what happens to the rest of the posse at the end of the book. I don't know. We'll see. Oh my goodness sakes. All right, the next book and the final book that I read for the A Yearathon Readathon was Say Her Name, the main, not the main character, I'm sorry, the author, James Dawson, is actually Juno Dawson now. Um, he is a she, so she's transgender and that's why I chose this book for the LGBT, LGBTQIA. <laughs> um, that's why I chose this for the theme. Basically, this is a Bloody Mary retelling. I, I've already told you guys, and I, I don't think you guys can see it because it's all the way down here. I have my favorite Bloody Mary retelling, and that is Mary the Summoning and Mary Unleashed by Hilary Monaghan. If you want to read an extremely scary YA Bloody Mary retelling, read that duology. This, however, was just meh. I gave this one 3.75 stars. It was okay, but it wasn't scary enough to grab my attention. So it's about a boarding school. Um, there was a Bloody Mary there was a Mary that went to this school. She died. Now she's seeking revenge on all of the students that call her name in the mirror. Our main character ends up doing that on Halloween. And they have five days to save her, release her, before they die. And that's basically it. But the thing is, if it was just a like a teen horror, I would have been totally fine. But of course our main character like falls in love. And so there's like this romance part of it. And I hate that. I don't care about who the main character likes. Get to the blood and gore. That's all I want to read about. So it was well written and it was scary at times. But the end was a little cheesy and I didn't like the romance. So 3.75 stars. Again, pretty generous. Um, I'm going to keep it because I like to collect scary retellings and I, you know, need this for versus purposes. Um, but again, I don't recommend this. I recommend the, uh, the Mary Unleashed and the Summoning duology instead because that Bloody Mary is way better. All right. The next book that I picked up is... The first book in the Misadventures of Edgar and Allan Poe. This is the Telltale Start by Gordon McAlpine and illustrated by Sam Zupardi. I read this book to my children every night about one or two chapters. They absolutely loved it. This is very cute. It is a middle grade, so I didn't um, rate it too high. I did give this one 3.5 stars. It's about... Edgar and Allen, they can be interchangeable because they share one mind. Even though they're not like Siamese, um, they are so advanced in their twin, their twinship 
that they have one mind with two bodies. That's what they say anyway. Um, they are the descendants of Edgar Allan Poe. They are the great, 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 great grand nephews of Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is a ghost in this book. He watches his nephews and tries to intervene whenever they need help. There is an evil plot going on where there's a villain who's trying to steal the boys for his own gains. Um, it was very cute. I loved all of the Poe aspects to it. The kids are very mischievous. Um, they have a cat named uh, Roderick Usher, who is our main character from the fall of the House of Usher. I love that they named their cat that. They are like super proud of their heritage, which is so fun to read. And yeah, I liked it. It was cutesy and 3.5 stars. The next book I was like totally looking forward to, it's the uh, second book from the library that I read this month, and that is Black Mad Wheel by Josh Mallerman. Now, like I've already said at the beginning of this video, Josh Mallerman wrote The Bird Box that was five million stars. I absolutely loved it. Then I read this book, and it was just, meh. I gave this one 3.5 stars. The majority of my books that I read this month were 3.5. So basically, this is about a band from... Oh, where are they from? Baltimore? Chicago? I'm not looking at it. They're, they're from a city. One day they are contacted from the military by one of the high up military guys. He says that we have this sound coming from Africa and uh, we want you guys to tell us what, what the sound is and locate it for us because it is destroying our weapons and other items that we've been putting in Africa. So the band goes to Africa, they locate the sound, but the sound does things to you. It's at some kind of frequency where it makes you nauseous and uh, if you listen to it too long you can pretty much just explode. So it was okay. Uh, again, very strange. It took a really long time to get to the point. Our main character, we meet him in the hospital. He's already been to Africa, and then we learn bits and pieces of why he got to Africa, what he did there, what he found while he was there. Uh, the military is very interested in what he saw and what happened to him because when we meet him he's in the hospital but all of his bones are crushed they want to know why he's not dead he his entire body is broken but he's not dead so they're testing this new medicine on him to see if it works they kind of want to make him a weapon that's what I think is happening in the book but I don't know and uh, yeah it was very weird. Now, if you read the Goodreads um, reviews, there's a theme that people keep talking about with Josh Mallerman. So the first book, uh, I'll show it again here, Bird Box, um, it's a see no evil kind of book. Everybody is blindfolded, you're not allowed to see it. In this book, it's almost like a hear no evil kind of thing. And Josh Mallerman has a book coming out in 2018 and people are speculating that it's going to be a speak no evil book. And if that's the case and, th and there's like a theme going on, I might raise this book a higher level because it'll make sense in the long run. But as a puzzle piece on its own, it doesn't make any sense. And it was just very out there and weird. So, and it wasn't, it wasn't scary. Like there was no like monster that I was hoping to find in this book. Again, high expectations because the bird box was so fabulous all around that this just didn't cut it. It just didn't give me what I wanted. All right, the next book that I read, good lord, is Survive the Night by Danielle Vega. This is a standalone. Uh, I gave this one 3.5 stars as well. It just wasn't, just wasn't that good. 
And you know what's sad is I don't even remember what this book is about. Now that I've read it, oh my gosh, okay, yes I do. <laughs> I, after I said that, I, I remembered. So this is about a girl who went to rehab for Oxycontin. I think that's how you say it. Um, she is a soccer player. She hurt her knee. She had surgery. The pain was really bad, and she was taking painkillers. She meets this girl who convinces her that she doesn't need to take the painkillers for pain, that she can take it for fun, and then she becomes addicted to taking these painkillers, and her parents find out, and they send her to rehab. Now, the first day she's back from rehab, she decides that she's going to go to her old friend's house for a sleepover. These are all like her soccer teammates. They're all goody goodies. They have good grades. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And the bad girl, the bad friend, um, comes and sneaks her off from this sleepover. And they go to a rave that's underground, like in some abandoned tunnels. Now, because of this book, I re it reminded me of the movie Catacombs. Um, that came out years ago starring Pink, the, you know, the singer. Uh, and that movie's just okay. But this reminded me a lot of that movie because our main character and her friends are stuck in these tunnels. They're lost. They can't find their way out. And there's something creepy. There's like a murderer down below that they're trying to get away from. The ending, though, killed me. Because the whole time you're thinking that our villain is like realistic and then the ending it's just so far-fetched you're like what the hell did I just read it doesn't make any sense uh so 3.5 stars it kept me engaged I was definitely interested in knowing what was happening with the book but the characters were so lame and I hate the trope where we have a good girl who likes hanging out with a bad girl and maybe it's because I've never experienced that in my own life. I've never been attracted to bad people who did naughty things for attention or they were thrill seekers. So it doesn't make sense to me why these good girls are drawn to these very bad girls and why they take their crap. Like the main character's best bad girlfriend treats her like crap and she puts up with it because she's just so in love with her badness that she wants to stay friends with her it just I hated that drama aspect of it 3.5 stars all right uh, two more books that I completed in October the next one was The Grip of It by Jacques Jemk I, I don't know how to say this author's name this again was also in our nocturnal readers box and I even put this on my most anticipated reads list before we got it in the box so I was super hyped for this one because it is a haunted house retelling this is an adult book um a couple of these books were adult anyways this was adult I gave this book 3.5 stars as well it's about a couple there's James again and Julie James and Julie uh, they are having marital problems James is a gambler and he's gambled away all of his savings um, now all they have is the like the family savings th that they use to pay bills and the wife Julie thinks that they need a, a a new outlook you know they need to move meet new people so he doesn't go back to his old haunts and he stops the gambling so they look for houses in areas that um, they can you know find work and they come across this house that is too good to be true. It's super cheap. The realtor is telling them there's this funny noise and there's all these weird like secret doors and like secret passages because the builder of the house was eccentric, yada yada. Uh, that should have been their clue not to purchase, but they were just so excited about the price that they bought it up immediately and this is a pretty big house for two people with no animals or children so they move into the house and immediately they start feeling the effects of the house the house is evil and they start going a little mad and they start blaming each other uh that usually happens with haunted houses because there's so much aggression and and um negativity that the 
people in the house, they start fighting and nitpicking at each other. And it just goes really bad from there. Um, yeah, but it just it wasn't scary. The points of time where I thought it was going to be really eerie and creepy, it just didn't happen. And I was totally bummed by that. Again, the book was interesting. I was able to keep picking it up without getting bored. But it wasn't scary, and so I was totally disappointed. Uh, 3.5 stars. Almost done. The last book that I completed is the sequel to the Tale Telltale Start. This is Once Upon a Midnight Eerie. This was the only four star book that I read in October. I read this again to my children. They loved it. They can't wait for me to read book three tonight. Um, in this one, the Poe twins are in a movie. They are playing their uncle when he was young. So it's like a biopic of Edgar Allan Poe. And they meet the Dickinson twins. So Emily Dickinson's great, great, great grand nieces are also in the movie. So the boys hang out with the girls, they become friends, and they have to solve a murder. Um, they are in New Orleans, so they have that downtown, southern, gothic kind of feel to it. I liked the murder mystery. The villain in this one was a little bit cheesier than the one before where they had the mad scientist this one was kind of eh. but i did enjoy the book overall again it's very cute and i love that it has edgar Allan poe because you know he's one of my favorite authors so there's that the only four star read of the month on to the books that i started but did not complete so I have scary out here which is a collection um edited by jonathan mayberry all of these writers have stories in here. I did read two stories, which were just okay. Um, I do want to complete this. I can't even tell you what the stories are about anymore. I'll have to look that up later. But they were just okay. And because I was trying to read so many books at one time, I just couldn't get in the mood to pick this up. I don't know why. I just didn't. The second book that is another collection of short stories is Greener Pastures by Michael Wehunt. Now this one was actually very good. I really like this author's writing. It's very twisted and weird, but I got a lot of the, the stories and I was really enjoying it. His writing is amazing. Um, I buddy read this with Maddie over at the Maddie Hatter. I will leave her channel link down below. She might have finished without me, but I kind of stalled. I have about four stories left to read, so I do want to finish this up this month. Um, we also got this in the Nocturnal Readers box. Did I already say that? I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I am enjoying this one, so I'm looking forward to continuing on. And then you guys already saw this in my TBR for November. This is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I'm really enjoying this book. It's a teen, teen drama horror so you have that whole high school she's not my friend anymore I'm fat yada yada which is really a snooze fest I'm hoping it's going to get scary soon it's a little bit creepy but it hasn't gotten scary yet I am currently on page 217 so you see that was my bookmark so basically if you can see this this tiny little section right here that's all I have left to read and it hasn't even gotten scary yet so this little bit better be just amazing or I'm going to be sad. But I will be finishing up this one hopefully uh, tonight. All right, and then I'm also currently reading The Wizard and Glass. I am, I read some today too. So I think I've, I'm up, like I said, 100 pages left about and then I will start the fifth book. I am loving this series. This one was a little slow only because I read the graphic novel. Here's a warning. Do not pick up the Gunslinger graphic novel series because it spoils the entirety of this book. It tells you all of the main details that's going to happen. Of course with this book it has all of the details that make the story longer and elaborate and gives you things that you didn't know that happened in the graphic novel, but the main points of the graphic novel 
have already been said and so I know it's going to happen before it happens which is pretty uh, sad it's a total bummer to me I, I wish I never picked up the graphic novel so with that being said it is good I'm just biased because I already knew what was going on if I just went in and didn't know this would be fascinating and the very last book that I started but did not complete is Edgar Allan Poe's Tales of Mystery and Madness, illustrated by Grizz Grimley. Who writes this? Who is the... Oh. I don't know. It just says Edgar Allan Poe's, but it's there's no, like, author? That's weird. Anyways, it's illustrated. Super cute. Um, because I was reading about Roderick Usher, the cat from the from the uh, middle grade. I wanted to read The Fall of the House of Usher, the actual story, to my children. I only got halfway through. It's very hard for them to understand because Edgar Allan Poe's writing is extremely flowery. So I need to finish this for them. All right. That was all of the books that I either completed or started in the month of October. Ooh, I gotta go. Um, okay, so I did end up watching a few horror movies in October. I did watch Gerald's Game. I thought it wasn't as good as the book. If I had to rate it, I would give it three stars. It was just okay, but the, the part where, if you guys seen it, it's on Netflix, there is... Our main character and then her dead husband and they're they're talking in the movie in the book it's different so when I first started watching it I thought he was a ghost but it's supposed to be all in her head and that's hard to film so I understand why they did that but it threw me when I was watching it just didn't it didn't look right in my eyes. The second movie that I watched was Red Dragon which is the very first book in the Thomas Harris um, series which is the Hannibal Lecter series. I enjoyed that movie a lot. I think Ralph Fine is an amazing actor and he did such a great job as the Tooth Fairy. The next third movie I watched was Silence of the Lambs which now that I've watched it and then I've watched Red Dragon which was um, filmed a few years after Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs is a little cheesy now. The acting was a lot better in Red Dragon. But that's a classic, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I also watched Little Shop of Horrors. I really like that musical. Me and my son watched it, and it was fun to sing the songs with him. I also watched Clown, which was super lame. It's about a man who puts on a clown costume, and he can't take it off, and it, like, starts becoming, like, skin. And then he, like, transforms into this, like, demon clown. Uh very weird super cheesy like 2.5 stars um wasn't scary at all but I really enjoyed the look of the clown that was really creepy and then of course I watched catacombs I told you guys about that um it's starring pink the singer and it's about pink and her sister they are in uh Paris they go down to the catacombs because there is a rave going down there and the main character, which is Pink's sister, uh, gets lost and there's a killer on the loose and she's trying to escape him. And then I also watched The Secrets of Emily Blair, again another Netflix movie, which is about a girl who becomes possessed and nobody believes her until it's too late and it was very dumb. Again, another dumb one. Um, another two, maybe three star. It was, it was okay, it wasn't great. And I also uh, purchased The Tension on Steam, and that is a Japanese, or Taiwanese, excuse me, Taiwanese uh, horror video game, which is kind of like a point and click. I'm stuck right now, so I have to watch a tutorial to figure out how to get past the giant. I'm like not even that far in the game. Um, but it is creepy and fun, and there's a lot of like atmospheric like laughing and chewing in the background which kind of freaks me out so 
there is that. And that's it. I hope you guys had a wonderful reading month of October. I hope you guys enjoyed all the looks that I shared with you. Let me know down below what you read in October. What was your favorite book? I don't, I don't know what my favorite is. I, I really only like them mostly. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!